So just to those of you who just have a small garage you're working with, this is what I got going on. Just a single stall townhome garage. Nice and heated at least. Uh, you can see it's pretty cramped in here, but uh, we do the best we can with what we got. So let's get this video started. Hello everybody. So welcome to the Honda CRF 150F snow bike build. Uh, now sitting behind me here is uh, some progress I've made that we'll be covering today as the uh, rear end to that snow bike and then to the right of me is the actual motorcycle. So uh, today we're going to cover that build, um, what steps I took, and then at the very end we're going to talk about what's next on the uh, channel itself, um, getting into some of the prior builds and a little more specifics on that, but we'll talk about that at the end. So I uh, hope you enjoy and uh, this is something I think a lot of us could try, so I'm going to try to be as specific as I can about the steps I took and just uh, something that you can follow and do maybe on your own if you so desire. So anyhow, uh, let's get right into it. Okay everybody, so just keep in mind during this build that I'm not making any adjustments to the actual frame of the motorcycle. I'm not doing any cutting or grinding or welding. I'd really like to be able to use this during the summertime as just a two-wheeled pit bike to just cruise around the trails. So keeping that in mind as we go through this build, all adjustments or changes will be done to the actual track itself or the apparatus that attaches to the bike. Here we have the track off of the Polit or Indy 500. Um, right now it's just kind of mocked up behind it, just seeing what kind of total length we're looking at here. Um, obviously I'd like to make this track quite a bit more narrow. Um, looking at just the proportions to the bike itself, it would have quite a hard time turning, uh, especially sharply. Um, so we're going to try to trim that down. I'd like to keep these runners um, functional within this, perhaps take off this space here by cutting along that edge um, so you still have the support uh, to keep that track in line but also a little more narrow. Um, when my research shows that uh, most of the timber sleds are about 12 and a half or 11 and a half inches wide on the track. Um, this one is 15. If I took the measured inch and a half off of those, that space there, I'm talking about 12 inches altogether. We'll be looking at um, cutting this and uh, kind of rebolting on the the idler wheels and the suspension in a way that works for the setup and then we'll be looking at how wide we need to make the attachment um, and how we're going to hook it up to this machine to get it uh, all working. Just looking at the skid here, um, looking to narrow things out a little bit, uh, you know, look at the alignment of these wheels. So this one here and this one here on the outside of that uh, of the track that I'm trying to cut off. So I'm going to try to put these actually to the inside. Uh, this one is here to begin with. I think I can probably find a way to fit this one on this side here. Looking at the structure of this part here to see if I can make that slimmer and get that idler wheel to fit closer in where they line up on the inside of the track, something like there. This piece here would normally sit like so with the wheels, the other one. Sitting like so, and this goes onto the track, okay? But I want to bring them in because I made the track smaller. This right here would fit in the inner grooves along with all the other wheels that bring it around, so it, it would go nice and smoothly. The issue I'm having is that I didn't realize this at first, but this wheel won't just slide onto the center because this circumference is, or this diameter of this pipe is bigger than the uh, than the actual wheel bearing. Uh, there's a taper at the end, which I didn't realize was there. Just looking at the finished product here. So I originally put the one bolt in here, then I chopped it. Both are threaded, screwed together quite nicely. A little off center, but uh, I'll show you what I'm. So that's what we're leaving in there. Um, but really, it's just keep them together. Uh, they can't twist because they're a little offset. So you actually can't even twist out while they're in the machine, which is a accidental win. So we put these in here. All right. 
that fits nice and flush, I can put the wheel on. The second wheel. stoppers. So now I can't go in and out. And then as I explained before, we'll just roll in a bolt and that's what will attach the frame. Alright, so this is by far the absolute hardest part of this project. It's cutting off the excess trap. is it. To get uh, the drive cog going, we're going to have to cut it to the width or it can just overlap a little bit to attach the bearings. And then as you can see, this is a hexagonal shape. We'll have to machine that down into a flat shape. Now, I don't have a lathe, uh, so I'll be making a bit of a homemade lathe. So let me show you what that's going to look like here in a second and essentially just gonna grind it down to a one inch diameter that we can slide um, the bearings onto, let's say like where my hands would be, and that will sit within here and then a dry um, uh, sprocket as well. Okay, so homemade lathe setup. <clears throat> the uh, outer part of these are exactly an inch, so I'm using my bearings here, which will slide into on each side. I bolted these to the 2x4s to get it off the uh, bench there, and I'm going to clamp it down with my clamps. <clears throat> so, plan here is to use the wheel as I'm spinning this whole operation with my drill. Spin it and then we'll grind as that's spinning to bring it down. Um, it won't be perfect, but it will be good enough <laughs> essentially. Okay, so this is the finished product. Everything's a lot lighter. All the wheels are to the inside of the track in their proper grooves. Okay, so I finished with the drive cogs, uh, turning that down to about an inch. And now, just looking at how this is going to work, these are three thin, three bolt bearings will hold, slide on, to the side, and like so. And then this will sit, of course. The inside, like that. And this will, of course, hold on to that piece of wood coming up for now, and then have the connection to the frame on the bike. So that's where that will sit. This side a little bit longer to fit the drive sprocket that will go to the jack shaft about here they'll have to drive from the actual motorcycle okay so cut up the boards the proper bolts in for the uh, actual supports of it and now you have a roller so this will give me an idea of where to put the holes 
in the aluminum that I get here, here, and there. Uh, and I'll also give you an idea of how wide I need to be um, to fit that jack shaft across here and then have it somewhere in here driving that chain. All right, so you can see it next to the bike there. Now this is about the setup, how I want it to look in relation to that bike. Those pieces of wood, of course, are just temporary. We'll be replacing them with a aluminum sheet that will be able to connect that setup with a track to a frame that will attach the frame of the bike. Um, of course, if you're working straight forward with aluminum, you wouldn't want to cut a hole and then end up making a mistake, and that's a pretty expensive one. So the wood's a good template for me. So next part here, we're going to make a frame that connects to the original swing arm. Uh, you can see I've already made a cross beam here that's weldable. Beams will come out and go crosswise to those pieces of wood, which are then, of course, will switch to the aluminum. So this is what we got to work with here. My plan to create a good mounting point for this is to first get myself a weldable piece that sits on that on this bolt. So my idea here is I'm going to get a flat piece of steel, put it on top, weld it, and then cut a hole that fits nicely with this bolt going through. Um, of course this piece will be longer, it's going to go from side to side so there's no shifting involved. And then I have that whole piece to weld to. This tube with these two metal welded on each side will fit perfectly for the mounting point for the main uh, swing arm attachment. Um, now with this, what I'll be doing here, this is the, uh, the original bolt that goes through. Goes on nice and snug. I'm gonna switch it. Go put this on. I'll bolt that in place so that I can weld it and it stays right in the center and tight. Um, we don't want it warping at all in this situation for sure. All right. Uh, we got nice and squared up, so we should be good to go with at least tack welding it. Alright, so with this here, now we have slides right into that position. That bolt goes across. At the other end, now we have a nice solid spot to weld pipe out of. Uh, this ain't going anywhere, it's nice and snug in there. Uh, turned out really well, actually. And that should be plenty strong, um, or at least I hope. Alright, so the bike is leveled appropriately uh, and the track is about the height that I want it to sit. I'll show you how this all looks. Like I said, that board is just for a template. So now it's time to take three, three boards here and attach them to the, or sorry, slots of metal lead to that one there through an apparatus that comes up and mounts on each one. So just getting these first couple parts put in a fish mouth the each edge and now I'm gonna put them sorry put them to their respective spots all right so uh, we have the beginning mocked up here uh, this is fully welded in place uh, and the idea here is that the way this sits all I need to do is create the rest of the framework that would connect this to here to here and give it a lot of strength we're gonna make like an arch almost like a bridge structure that keeps it in place, keeping in mind we want to add a jack shaft across. All right, folks, so here's where I'm at. I finished this last structural piece. Um, this is the basis for what the 
track will connect to. Um, very sturdy, nice and light. Uh, I think it's gonna be a great point. Uh, the next thing now is to create uh, a essentially a shock mount. Um, it, there won't be a shock, it'll be a solid piece of steel, but just something that can mount to securely. All right, so what I'll be doing here is notching each side of this pipe to fit in the center of this, and then I'll reinforce it so I can have that docking point for the false, uh, essentially, suspension. Uh, that'll just be a stiff rod to hold this fixed in place. Right, so we'll start by notching this. Um, this is a Harbor Freight tubing notcher, uh, 60 bucks. I think I paid for it. It does the job, it's nothing too special, but it will cut a, a good notch for you. That is your notch tube. All right, so that's tacked in place. Now it's time to ready up these metal pieces to fit in here to hold that rod again. Two pieces are done and I'm going to put a hole through both of them first so that it's nice and straight and even. Okay, so we're ready to weld the points onto the inside where they'll hold that rod coming through to where the suspension tower would normally sit. Now this is by far the most uh, high stress part of this whole build because essentially this contraption here will take all the torque force coming at it. So we have maybe six inches or so to handle you know, a track that is maybe three feet uh, long altogether. So we want good welds, we want lots of support. Um, we don't want to take any shortcuts here. All right, folks, so just want to let you know what welder I'm using here. This is the Titanium 125 Flux Core Welder. Uh, it's a really simple gasless flux core welder. I got it from Harbor Freight for about $160 on sale, I believe. It's worked really well for me. Haven't had any issues with it. Um, it's a little messy. Uh, it's a little fidgety, but uh, it gives a good weld, and uh, so far I'm pretty pleased with how well it's been working. I will put a link in the description for the welder so you can check it out yourself. All right, guys, so here is the essentially finished product of that mounting space for the non-spring suspension. Now this is with a, again, flux core welder. Um, no, it could be nicer, but uh, I'm still learning. And uh, I think nonetheless, it will be quite strong. So yeah. So right now, as you can see right here, I have this uh, eighth inch square metal tubing. It's connecting right now to where that original suspension um, starting point would be. Uh, it'll come down now. Let's get this all hooked up so it looks real nice. Intercept at that point that we built. And sit just like so. So now, of course, we'll use a better bolt, probably grade eight. Um, but this is real sturdy, really strong. I think it's gonna work really well for the application. Uh, really happy with how it, this all turned out. I think we're gonna have a nice performing um, rear end to hook up the track to. So this is pretty much complete. Okay, so just a reminder, this is one inch, 14 gauge, mild steel. Uh, works really well for this application. 
I've used a tubing bender to make those bends, which I'll put in the link in the description. It's just a generic brand mechanical tubing bender, but you can check it out if you want to mimic this process. All right, so we have it all mocked up. Uh, this is looking real promising right now. I just bought some aluminum sheets to replace these sidewalls with for the more the permanent part of it. It's all essentially the way I want it to look, and now it's just time to put in the permanent pieces. Um, I'll be replacing this this template with 3 16th inch aluminum, um, and then I'll be making the front ski. But uh, this is about the size it's all gonna gonna fit to, and uh, about how high off the ground it will be, and, and all that. Uh, just give you an idea, this does have some strength to it, I, I can't stand on it. So we get a little bit of suspension here, which is cool. I think it's going to work real nice, so stay tuned. I'll show you how I cut out the aluminum and put a little style to it and uh, get it all working well. So this is where using that wood template is really nice, because I know exactly where I need to punch the holes and where I need to cut it in order to fit correctly. Without this, I might have pushed the hole in the wrong place and had to start with a whole new piece of aluminum. Also, just as a side note, cutting aluminum is really dusty and dirty. Make sure you wear something to protect your eyes and something to uh, filter what you're breathing. I'm using an N95 mask here, which seems to do the trick. Okay, so Check it out. We got the sides cut up and kind of mocked in place. Uh, the next step here will be putting in the bolts for uh, where those cross members will attach to the actual frame. Um, I just want to make sure the bike is nice and level and also the track is nice and level. That way when it's bolted on, it will, uh, you know, of course, all be nice and congruent. Along with that is making sure the bike is the right height off the ground and uh, it will be pretty much everything in place and ready to hook up the drivetrain. All right, so we got it all lined up. I've marked the holes to be drilled in all the spaces. And uh, yeah, that was a pain in the butt, um, trying to get this all straightened up to the bike and everything level, but I think it's gonna work real nice. Alright, so here we have it. Uh, everything is about put together as it can be before adding the drive uh, train and the brakes. Uh, of course, we still have to make the front ski. Um, we'll do that in the next video along with the drive train, but it's turned out really nice. I really like the way it looks. Um, the idea here is modeling it after a timber sled snow bike. Um, it's on a Honda CRF 150, of course. Uh, obviously have some fine tuning, cleaning, and just some more grinding to do on it, but I really like the way it turned out. I think it's going to be fun to just scoot around on this winter. Anyhow, hope you enjoy the rest of the video. This has been a lot of fun. Everybody, well, thanks again for viewing. A uh, big thanks to Mike Festiva, uh, who sent a lot of viewers my way. Uh, that guy is super good at what he does for fabricating. He's got some really fun builds on his channel, so I'll put a link in the description for that. Uh, there's a lot more to come on this channel. Um, we're kind of jumping into it here. I have quite a few builds that I had been doing, and now I'm starting to put videos out on them. Uh, one of them is this beautiful blue buggy uh, that I've been working on. And also, uh, per a lot of your recommendations for some improvements to my uh, Predator 212 snow bike build, we'll be doing some more stuff with that. But anyhow, just want to say lots more to come, and I appreciate all the likes and the subscriptions. It's just been really fun and exciting for me. Uh, so anyhow, hope you have a great day, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.